Now, here's something funny, and definitely something I can speak about, and that is the police. The police force. Whenever entering the hospitality industry in areas due to operations, that the Aotearoan cops in this video speaks volumes about how much of the divide and the lack of knowledge on what to do to complete the objective while keeping safe. And that lack of having that knowledge puts these two and everyone else around them in a heightened state of danger. Geniuses. Now, let me show you what I mean. And if you are ever out and about in the hospitality industry and you see some cops in some altercation where they're outside the front of a nightclub and they're not physically engaging yet, but there definitely is aggression, and see if what I say is true. Hopefully it doesn't come that way, but see if it does anyways. Just do this. Just count how many cops there are and how many people walking around them who aren't cops who may be his friends and are drinking alcohol or displaying signs of inebriation, especially when you have big fucking cameras pointed at them. Well, in the example that you'll see, probably not. But this time, luckily they're here to capture these two Ronnies, do their thing. You see, it's not planning or tactic chosen which gets them through this event, as it's alcohol driven environment so logic isn't there so it's not tactics for these two it was just dumb luck it would only have taken just one one person to try and free his mate and these geniuses plans would have been bowled over so these two ronnies these two ronnies get a request to remove a perfect example of what we call here down under a branch of us kiwis these guys from one of our special branches and we call those people in Aotearoa the pissed ones. No, I just walked in there. Bouncers at a nearby bar ask Daniel and Chris to help remove one of their patrons for being too drunk. Listen, no, I did yes, nothing listen, wrong. Nothing listen here. Wrong. I did nothing wrong. Listen here. What? Wrong. I did nothing okay. wrong. What? What have I done wrong? Be quiet. But this is too far gone to make sense of things and soon talks his way into being arrested. The reason, the reason you've been put out here, guys, because you're too intoxicated to be in there. No, I'm not. You are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Well, hey, have I you I've got a I don't care. You're too intoxicated to be in there, okay? Yeah, no, but you got a bad shit. Go stop. Listen. Hey, look, you're under arrest, mate. You're under arrest. Come here. You're under arrest for sorting. What, what okay? did I do? I didn't okay. do nothing wrong, dude. What, 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 goes out of his way to befriend some of the other prisoners. Uh, let's now go follow, um, oh, well, we won't use his real name. What we'll do is we'll give the piss one a nickname. Let's call him Rangy. Now that Rang is all of the special branch of the great oak tree. Now, the thing with Rang and all of the special branch of that great oak tree of Aotearoa is that they are really fucking loud when you deal with them. They're harmless, but just really, really loud. These guys, the pissed ones, get pissed and boisterous, as we say, but they just won't get physical. They will only become physical if their mates do. So that is why you always create a distance between you, the subject, and anyone that you don't know, especially if your tactics now involve the use of the physical element restraints. Now also the thing with the piss ones is, like Rang here, is that loudness can piss off others as it does, as it does here at the station. And the thing is nobody pays attention. That's the key. The key is not to pay attention to the piss ones because all they are is loud. So it's best just to ignore them as they are always on the lookout for a reason to be loud. Like here, when someone recognizes, oh, hey, look, it's a pissed one. I thought it would be in there, I would be. I 
And when they seem reluctant to strike up a friendship, goes on a charm offensive. Fuck your shit. OPZ, you piece of shit. With a suggestion for how they might get better acquainted. Get on your knees, motherfucker. Suck my the bitch is it's true he's pissed so he is that's the normal well in their normal anyways that's what pissed people do loud and boisterous harmless majority of the time otherwise just really really annoying so that loud. was your introduction to who we call here in the aotearoa and hospitality industry the pissed ones and now now i'm going to show you who we call here in aotearoa's hospitality industry the ones we call the pieces of shit ones and we'll use the aotearoa police force once again these coppers are about to introduce us to a piece of shit called corey corey did something that has no mana to it and his mates no mana mates they tricked this kiwi young kiwi into believing that they were kiwis so they could befriend him and then corey and his manaless mates they beat up this young kiwi and stole all his stuff the thing that manaless boys do because they have no mana and in this case no brain ladies and gentlemen and all of those in between i'd like to welcome you to the piece of shit the manaless piece of shit called Corey. Down the side street and these guys just jumped me for my stuff. Took me down the side road, gave me some alcohol. Got a bit tipsy and then they just f***ed me up. Only an hour earlier, Simon was set for what he believed would be a good night out with new friends. But when South Auckland detectives Steve Wikes and Warwick Ad can find him, he's having anything but a good time. Are you OK? Where are the offenders, mate? What? How many offenders? He's a guy over there. Can we go straight over to the Yes, where, where are they, mate? Where are they? by the ASB or one, one of the credit cards. What? This is a PVE scheme. Can you show us? Can you direct him no, and we'll no, follow you? Straight, mate, you show him and we'll follow you. Yep. Go. Comes. We're just with a young lad. He said he's been jumped by a couple of offenders on the GSR section of Halva Road. Yeah, what's the uh, go on there? We're going to have to stop him and then get some details off him if you can't, can can't put anyone out. So they think that they've lost them, but then luckily managed to scrape it out and they spot old Corey. Yeah, they're doing a 4E job um, at the request of the... Take it, take it. Say again. The guy on the bike? So, yeah, could you just follow us? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, the guy on the bike, he reckons. Yeah, Just go down. Mate. I am in number 3243. Mate, how you doing? Good. Steve White's from the Crime Squad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's been happening? <laughs> Look at this hoodlum. Like, honestly. You're thinking, well, these are the types of criminals that we have running around our streets here in Aotearoa. This guy is not a Bond villain, eh? Like, here he is here on his Rally 20. This, <laughs> this is the elite type of criminal they have here in Aotearoa. Geniuses. Welcome to Corey. And I wonder how genius here tries to talk his way out of this situation. It'll just be genius. Well, he's got here. You've just got here, have you? That's the guy there. Yeah. Let's take a look at this guy for a second, eh? This genius known as Corey. Let's let's take a look at how smart Corey, you know, the genius and his criminal plan is. Right? His plan was to befriend someone, get him drunk, attack him, steal his money, and terrorize the poor young Aotearoan, and then not take off and lie low, like most scum do. No, genius here decided in his merry plan he was going to jump on his little bike and pedal his way into town. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, that is a Bond villain from down under. Genius. Which one? Yeah. Mates, wait there a minute. Come over here. Yeah, it's just it's me, I just got here. Yeah, 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 it's just it's me. What's happened? This guy jumped me for my money. <laughs> Which one? Jump me this guy has got my card. <laughs> okay. Bash me up. Yeah. What have you got on you? Can you get knives? Check weapons? I ain't got my phone. Okay. I ain't got no weapons. This guy's got my phone. 
So of course, Corey, the piece of shit, he plays dumb as just he looks. What's happened tonight? I don't know. Can I ask why I'm getting pulled over? Bree, Bree, I just go, told you why. Hold on, hold on, I've been fighting. I don't know. And now you get to hear the reason why people just like me don't like pieces of shit like Corey. Okay. Oh, like, they're telling me if you want to die, do you want to die, G? Do you want to die? I was like, nah, I just want to go home for the night. It's all I want. Who? I need to I know exactly. Three guys. Three guys? Yeah, that's it for the girl. She's the only one that tried to stop it because they wanted to kill me down at the railway track. I was like, oh, that's it for me. And you grab the bottle and go like that. Yeah. <laughs> I just, she you know, wanted to go home and I gave them my number and then they still had me like that and then I just ran for it. Okay. What have you taken from me? Huh? My phone? Yep. My my hat and my pen number, my card, he's got money, he's lying. What's your phone? It's a Nokia. What's your card? Um, he's got it on him. What did he take? Five grand. Five thousand dollars? Yeah, five thousand dollars. You just wait there a second, I'll be yeah. pretty in a minute, we'll get you sorted yeah, out, okay? So now these cops know how much of a piece of shit this Corey is. And now they go check out his smartness. No, arrest these please, 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 Wise words said by a dickhead. This next mix is gold. While this dickhead's been fucking squawking on the ground, the credit card has fallen out of his back pocket right beside him. It's genius. Where's, where's that come from? Huh? Did he have that on him? This is the only one I never get it on me. Hmm? I never get it on me. That wasn't there before. Where's that come from? I don't know. Heaps of people has been around here. So his excuse for the card is, opposite oh, they bring a couple of people around here. Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, Bond villain, Bond villain, Bond villain, Corey. <laughs> Dumb inky, <laughs> you know, it would be kind of funny if you could imagine, remember in Casino Royale, we're all sitting around playing that high stakes poker, if this dude was at the table drinking, like, that would be funny. So have, you have you touched that card then? Your fingerprint's going to be on there. Touch it? No? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. So now the cops go hit up old Corey, the moneyless man's moneyless mates. Here's the thing. The coppers think that it's all Corey, you know, the genius out of this bunch. But then they see the Vic's cell phone sitting next to this genius. And all genius has to say is that he doesn't know anything about it. But these things in my country are really that dumb. They literally talk their way into a prison sentence. Listen here. Your phone's ringing. Your phone is ringing. I never phone in my pocket. What's that there? Yeah, I put that there. Who put that there? I put it there. J4 Genius. Ladies and gentlemen, and all those in between, I'd like to introduce you all to who we call in here in Aotearoa the Bond villains, mate. Whose phone's that? That's it. The white guys. I don't know. So why have you got it then? Because, because I came through, met up with these fellas. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this genius's excuse for having the phone on him is that he come through here with his mates. I say that we make a pact here right now, and all around the world, from now on, we won't have any more Bond villains' children. And how are we going to do that, ladies and gentlemen? Well, that's simple, really. We just all have to stop sniffing petrol. Had a drink. And? I had a drink. I asked for a text. You can ask the dude that's the, uh, what's the court victim. Yeah. Uh, ask that fella. I asked him. He, he, he lent it to me to give a text. I gave it back to him. My text came through. I, I did a text. Yeah. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that dumb even here in the beautiful country of Aotearoa. Now, let's get back to the marvellous one, Corey. And realising that's where he's also heading, Corey decides he's not going quietly. OK, what are we doing? We're arresting you for the robbery. Robbery? Of this gentleman over here. I've got you, brother. You little white Corey, 
Put him on the floor in a minute. What? Put him on the floor. Buzz. Calm down. You don't want to hurt yourself. You need to calm down. Oh man, this next part is pure comedy gold. Cheers, Corey. Anyway, so Corey's been sitting on his ass for a little while now, eh? And his mates over his shoulder have yelled out, Oh, Corey, fucking say something good on camera, mate, because it's going to go up in front of the judge and the judge is going to see the cameras. And Corey here's gotten this beautiful brainwave inside of that Jay for Genius head of his and thought, oh shit, you're right. I better say something good in front of the camera so the judge sees it. And this, <laughs> this is what this genius come up with. I just want to thank, say thanks to the police for the chase. Um, getting me. Um, they do a really good job, but I could have got away. I chose to hand myself in to them. That's a good thing about me. I'd rather not get caught. I'd rather hand myself in to them. That's a good thing. Yep, I finished. So how did it all end up for Corey and his moneyless mates? Well, both of them got two years stretch inside. And now, well, now I've got some research. Here's a question for you guys. It's to do with your police, your police force. Wherever you are on the planet living, you'll have a police force, right? And you really only get to see someone else's police force and how that police in your country act and behave, as well as the procedure when it comes to being arrested and detained. You see all the time, well, I do, but... It's usually US cops and UK cops and, well, Canadian, English-speaking countries which make up programs. It's the only way that you get to see someone else's police force. Otherwise, you just wouldn't know. If you didn't see it on TV somewhere, you wouldn't have a clue about how someone else's police force worked. It's like not many, if any, of the people that are going to watch this episode, you right now, that you most likely have never seen a doco on the police here in Aotearoa. That brings me to my question that I hope that you can answer. That's to do with our cops and what happens when New Zealand police arrest you, right? When ANT Iran cops arrest you, it's to do with a process and a procedure. Because, because I see that process in many countries, like you see it on TV, and I've just never seen it in any episode of Cops or UK Met Police or whatever. Just never seen them do something our cops do. So... That's why I thought I'd ask you guys this question. And it's the Aotearoa Police Force. When you get arrested here, here, take you down to the police station, they make you go through a strip down and a feel up. That's what they call it. Every time you get arrested. And the weird thing is, is that you can't do it too fast because they'll say to you, hey, look, take your clothes off slower. It's creepy. So... My question is, do your police do this procedure? Or is it real abnormal? Because, see, our cops say that everyone does it. You know, everyone does it. So, what I want to know is in the comments below, right? Very simple research. A, yes. Or B, your cops are gay, bro. <laughs> Anyways, Dahlia's stay safe. Stay safe, and I'll see all you guys in the next episode. Stay safe. Go, Keith.